Because I know you're here for some fabulous comedy, and I found one brave enough to to come up here in front of all of you guys. So we, also, I want you to know, just rest assured, he will be paid seventy-five cents on the dollar. <laughs> That's right, to maintain the theme. So, without further ado, please give a warm welcome to Ben Hess. I am the sacrifice. <laughs> Give me a second, I gotta make a mess. Ooh. They shot early. <laughs> What's happened at the end of the show? Did I say nest? I meant funeral parlor. Parlor? Fire. <laughs> Alright. I think I'm comfortable now. How are you guys doing? <laughs> Good. Okay. Alright. Alright. I'll try to fix that. <laughs> I saw all, I saw like 20 women walk in at, at all at the same time earlier. And I got super intimidated. <laughs> I ain't afraid of no ghosts. This is so blunt, I don't know how else to open this bit. I'm not afraid of ghosts, because I'm a single parent, and there's nothing that a ghost can do that my kids haven't already done to me. <laughs> I'm haunted by a 10 and seven year old girls. And every time there's always someone that apologizes to me every single time I say, I'm like, what am I in for? I am, um, I'm always like, you know, wondering like, you know, like a ghost will like, turn the hallway light switch on and off. And I'm like, my kids do stupid shit like that all the time. <laughs> I have yelled, what do you want from me? Into the abyss several times already. <laughs> you know, I mean? even if it was like, man, like if I walked into the kitchen and like the, the chairs were upside down, uh, I would just blame my kids. <laughs> anyway, like, I'd be like, girls, you're grounded. They'd be like, we didn't do it, ghost did it and I would not believe that. Because <laughs> that would be insane. So there would just be like some poltergeist in my house like infinitely trying to send me a passive message and my daughters are just always grounded. <laughs> they would grow up with a terrible childhood filled with horrible memories that would later turn them into ghost hunters. <laughs> and their whole story would be about ghosts, but really it's about family. <laughs> Sometimes, like, I fucking, I fantasize about getting possessed. Like, by some incorporeal form. Because, as a single dad, if I, if I became possessed by a ghost, I'd be like, oh, thank God, you take the wheel for a second, man. <laughs> I need a break. I'm gonna watch the game. But look, before I go, ghosts, I'm gonna let you know, do not fuck this up. I know you think you're scary, but you haven't met their mother. And if, if they're late for school once, you are going to be in trouble. Wow, that just shut everybody up. I'm not talking shit about their mom. It isn't one of those angles, I promise you. <laughs> She's a wonderful mother, we're good friends. We're, we're co-parents. We have respect for each other. I just want to make that clear. It's just she is a real mama bear. And if that ghost fucks up, he's going to be in trouble. I'm going to sit back and watch. That's the point. <laughs> I don't know. Like if I were walking through my house at night and I turned the corner. And there was like a, a haunted, like Victorian ghost child. And they said something creepy like, I'm late for the tea party. I'd be like, fucking sick. <laughs> Girls, found you a friend. <laughs> Go have fun. I'll scare up some snacks. <laughs> I wrote scare up some snacks like 30 minutes ago and I'm surprised it took me that long to come up with it. <laughs> I did that um, that single parent stuff up top to humanize me, 
So now you know that your sacrifice is a human being with a family. <laughs> I bet you feel good about yourselves now. I am. I am single and not single. I have a binary girlfriend. I call her my binary girlfriend because we're on again, off again. <laughs> <laughs> All zeros and ones with her, man. <laughs> but I love her, and um, and the other day she was like, she wanted to spice things up, getting you know. And she was like, hey, I wanna, I wanna try role playing. And I was like, fucking sick, I have been waiting forever for you to say that, for you to say you wanna try role playing. So I broke out my limited edition Curse of Straw 20 Sided Die. <laughs> and in character sheet. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh, I have an idea for a fungal druid. It's like a regular druid, but with fungus. <laughs> And she was like, no, I meant role play. I'm like, fantasy. And I was like, yeah, fungal druid. <laughs> and she was like, no, I mean like in the bedroom, like role playing in the bedroom, like sexually. And I was like, fucking sick. I have no idea what you're talking about. Because <laughs> I grew up Mormon, you know. I'm a vanilla bean. <laughs> My, my, my family thinks basketball is too spicy. <laughs> I don't know how to role play unless I'm role playing as a missionary. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, I don't understand this thing, girl. How about you, uh, you give me an example. And she's like, okay, so for example, within this fantasy scenario, Within these walls, I am going to play a stripper called Sapphire. And I was like, wow, woefully uncreative. Let me try. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, don't restrict your most valuable tool, your imagination. And I was like, in this fantasy scenario, I would like to role play as the corpse of long deceased Supreme Court Justice Roger B. Hay. <laughs> and she was like, that's disgusting. And I was like, you know, and I'm like, well, it, it makes sense if you think about it, right? I mean, and I was like, you said I could, I could be whoever I want, whoever I want, you know, and who I want to be is I want to role play as a corpse of long deceased Supreme Court Justice Roger B. Hay. And she said, I don't think it's disgusting Specifically that you chose to play a corpse. I think it's disgusting that you specifically the role play as a corpse of long deceased Supreme Court Justice Roger Hagen. <laughs> and I'm like, why? And she's like, the same long deceased Supreme Court Justice Roger B. Hagee, who in 1859 spearheaded the Supreme Court's decision to overturn the Missouri Compromise, leading the slave pens as far north as Washington, DC, our very nation's capital. I was like, how the fuck do you know that? <laughs> she was like, Sapphire's dancing her way through law school, baby. <laughs> All right, that's my time. I'm Ben Hess. Y'all in a wonderful crowd. Enjoy the rest of the show. You guys seem like going for Ben Hess. <laughs> <laughs>